Yo yo guys, tell me to take from off targets five and prepping in this video I'm gonna be going over my 72 hour home emergency kit. So basically the point of the kit and supplies I'm gonna go over in this video. I don't feel like this is a situation which I'm kind of planning for. Uh, I don't feel like it's a situation where it's the end of the world and it's apocalypse and I need to bug out to keep myself safe and other people at my house safe. But this is a situation which I feel like warrants having some kind of preparedness just to keep the people in it safe, secure and fed. So we'll go over all that in, uh, in a second, all the supplies and gear and kit I have. But first of all, we're just going to go over some of the situations that I feel like are most likely to happen in kind of this situation that kind of mostly planned for in setting up this kit. So first of all, we have blackouts. So if there's blackouts, the local area is going to be affected. So there's going to be no services, there's going to be no food uh, in shops because the shops might not be open. There might be food in there, but you won't be able to get in, depending on if the shop owner decides to keep it open is only taking cash because obviously the registers won't be up uh, so it could as well from that as it could be riots so if the riots were localized to my local area directly where i live i'd probably want to bug out because it, I'd, it'd be a direct threat to me all the time you know at any time during the day or the night someone could try and break into my house to cause harm to me or to steal from me whatever uh, but if it was kind of localized i mean sorry if it was kind of local but in the main the big city i live near which i live near but isn't isn't too close to me if it was there i'd probably want to i'd probably feel like safe enough to hunker in to keep my house secure i wouldn't really feel like this was a direct threat so then it could be something like when storm sierra hit the uk uh it was extreme weather it was there was debris all over the roads my house actually got affected the outside of this loft compartment i mean actually a lot of it got ripped off and was in my garden because how bad the weather was if something like that was to happen again or if it was worse so that's kind of another thing and that could directly maybe affect riots as well uh, as well as that it could be like a water shortage or a food sort of or a food shortage kind of what went over with the uh, in my last video which was a british fuel crisis thing uh, go check out the video if you want but anyway uh, i remember a few years ago this is when i was younger and i weren't really a prepper this is when i didn't even know what prepping was I remember actually being in a queue for hours and hours because something happened to the local water uh, system, water plant, whatever you want to call it. I remember being in a queue for hours and hours and hours just to get four bottles of litres of water to last me, my mum and my little brother at the time. They were the only members of my family, uh, basically, to last us for about two nights. We got three litre bottles, I mean, sorry, four litre bottles of water to last us two, maybe three nights. That I, remember, I remember being in a queue for hours, I don't really remember what happened too much, but I remember that happening when I was younger. So I have a lot, a, a large amount of water storage. You, you see later on when I go over supplies. So they're kind of some of the situations that I think uh, that I've planned this kit for. So now let's go over the actual, uh, which has, like I said, a class of security. So for here are the items that I kind of class of security. So first off, go over how I actually plan to keep my house secure, keep it safe, keep people out or debris from bad weather. So here we have some wooden planks. We have three here. I do have some more stuffed up outside under some tarp. But these can basically be used to secure windows, doors, and stuff like that. In my house, they could also be used for firewood if I needed. Basically, to cook stuff. I mean, I do have propane tanks in my garden as well, which I can use with my uh, stove to cook stuff. But as well, there is some wooden planks. Like I said, as well as that, I do have in here some nails, bolts, and screws. Uh, can I ever use the hammer? As you can see, here, which I which which is in some of my. Uh, my basic tools that I have around my house, so I'll show you the rest in a little bit. And then here we have a power drill as well that can be charged by my solar power bank or by my hand by my hand crank uh, radio. Big brain powers, you know this. Uh, so yeah, that's how I directly plan to keep my house secure from outside threats. So it could be riots, extreme weather, like I said. So we'll move them off to the side. So this is just a. Uh, Box of that come in, it's just got the charger for it and some of the drill bits. There's the nails and screws. So, next off, we'll go over some basic things that I feel like can be used in everyday situations, but you should have. Uh, just have some duct tape. I do have more than this, but this is just the one that's nearly used. So, the other one's kind of downstairs where I keep duct tape, but this one's the one that's pretty much been used. So, I'm just using this to show you in the video. So, some duct tape. I also have duct tape in all of my bug out bags as well, which are in this room. So, if I needed more tape, I could get it out of there as well. Uh, so first of all we have a wrench so this can be used to basically turn off appliances like gas mains water mains you know stuff like that so that's what this can be used for it can also be used for other stuff uh, bleeding radiators if you needed more water a screwdriver can be used to uh, turn off electricity you can use it to unscrew things to maybe turn off electrics or other things or unscrew things to get to your gas mains so a basic screwdriver we don't have more than this but this is just to show you 
then a hammer. This can be used for putting up the boards, it can be used for a self defense tool in a worst case scenario, and a hammer is just good to have for lots of other household things like putting up shelves and stuff. So that is my kind of tools. So then we'll go over communication. So first of all, we've got my handheld receivers. So these can be used to directly communicate with people in my house or maybe we have to go out of our house, or maybe there's some kind of supplies, supply depot that's open and I go to get some supplies to keep the people in my house fed. Uh, and they can communicate with me, you know, maybe the phone towers are down, but if not, we could maybe use our cell phones. So some handheld receivers to just be able to communicate. So as well in communication here, I do have a little hand crank radio. Uh, I was going to get a big one, but I got this one because this could be used in my easily putting one of my bug out bags as well. It's waterproof. It does have a hand crank on it, so you can charge it like that. Also, it's solar powered, so it can't be charged. I could just put it out in the garden. It is waterproof, uh, like from direct from what rain water, but it can't be submerged. So you can put this in a if you put this in a bucket of water, or you drop it in a pond, it'd probably break because of that bit there. This can also can be used as a power bank, or you can charge it. I could charge it with my. Uh, solar power bank that's over there so basically a radio like that proud of our commitment to the community. it's got FM, AM and it has weather band but I don't know if we have that in the UK uh, I've tried picking up a station on it I couldn't, if we do let me know in the comments but it has FM and AM radio stations so that is communication so I'll put that off to the side so next all we have illumination so here I've got uh, four flashlights different sizes uh, these three have rechargeable batteries these have some batteries that aren't in it at the moment because I keep them uh, <coughs> I keep them safe there's just some batteries to show you that I do have batteries for these as well but basically these three are rechargeable and with my solar power bank there you can see this is a solar one I could charge these or I could charge my handheld receivers uh, here's a charger port for the uh, for the rechargeable batteries bringing other stuff over that I'm not going over at this moment of course it's stuck in a wire because why not that's just pissed me off I swear uh, so yeah so that's how I can keep my stuff basically powered so stuff like flashlights handheld receivers or my uh, radio or my power tool so that's that Let's off to the side kind of really awkward with my limited space how I'm having to do this video but yeah so that's, that. so that's how I'd keep my stuff charged. So uh, wealth kind of can be class of communication as well, but also can be security. I would recommend having a little emergency whistle for everyone in your house, which I do. I have six, and that's how many people live in my house. Uh, so basically, if some if you was in a room, you had this around your neck, and someone happened to be trying to break in, you could simply whistle for help, or if there's some kind of maybe a car hit my building or something, if it was really extreme weather, like tornadoes, which we don't really get to in the UK, but it could be extreme wind, I mean, like I said, when that happens, there was actually cars getting lifted off the ground, so if there was extreme weather, and some kind of debris happened, come, happened to come in the house, and you were pinned underneath it, you got to a switch, so you could blow up, then other people know where you were, if you was underneath debris, or it can be used for <coughs> other signaling situations, so then we'll go over if there's some kind of, uh, ghastly biological threat I don't know something like that so I do have gas masks and dust masks as you can see here so these are really for an extreme situation some kind of maybe uh, chemical attack and maybe we just don't have the option to get out of the situation or something like that or it could be a forest fire we don't really get them in the UK but they could be used for that as well so gas masks are for really an extreme situation but they are something I have stocked up just in case and obviously the filters for the gas masks as you can see there uh, as well, I'd recommend having a permanent marker. Basically, you can use this to, uh, if you've got some kind of chart, to chart down how many supplies you've used. You can use it to leave messages on walls or stuff, or, or loads of other things like that. Uh, went over duct tape. I think the only right I need to go over is my fire extinguisher. So, I have a fire extinguisher for some kind of like riots, or there could be some kind of gas fire in my house. Obviously, if it was a gas fire, this could be used to initially put it out, but I still want to get out of the house. A gas fire could go off again at any time, so if there is a gas fire, get as far away from it as you possibly can but you could initially put out the actual fire but it could go off at any time uh, like I said so this can be used if there's some kind of maybe people throwing petrol bombs this is a powdered one it's ABC which basically means it can be used for wood fuels or petrol stuff like that and it can be used for electrical fires and other stuff as well 
So that is everything that I can class the security and stuff to keep us directly safe. Now I'm going to go up my supplies on the table and go over them. So now guys, we're going to go over supplies before we get into the main supplies such as food, water and medical supplies. I'm just going to go over a couple of items that I definitely recommend having in your 72 hour emergency kit. The reason I'm going over them now is because I really want class easy security. So first of all, we have got some medical waste bags. So the point I've got medical waste ones instead of just normal trash bags. If you need to do your business such as number one or number two, which is kind of like I've got toilet roll here as well. Uh, so if you need to do your business, you don't want to do it in a normal trash bag because then when the situation is over and you want to send it away to be picked up by the uh, bin man, that's what we call them in the UK, or trash collector, whatever you call it in other countries. So basically the point of this is so they know what it is and you know what it is. You know that you've done your dirty stuff in this, you know that you've taken number one and number two in this bag. You could put these directly into your toilet, directly into a bucket, or you could just poo into them directly yourself. You just hold it open and go like that if you wanted to it's completely up to you but definitely some medical waste bags also can be used to put dressings and bandages that have been used in there as well so then when they come to pick up they know it's medical waste or human waste you can maybe get some bio biohazard ones as well if when you take a shit it's extremely stinky but that's up to you uh, so now we're going to go over food supplies quite a good transition that from speaking about what's coming out to what's going in so I've got obviously more more food storage stored up than this. You would have seen that in the thumbnail. That ain't even all of it in the thumbnail. But just to show you, I've just got here. I've got some beans, some dog food, and some new potatoes. So obviously the dog food's not for me. If, you know, maybe if it was an extreme situation, ran out of food, I could eat it. But I have 12 tins, and each tin uh, I've given my dog half a day. So that's about that's over two weeks worth of food for my dog. But if I, if it wasn't an extreme situation, I could pretty much just give him a tin of food a day. He'd be fed like normal. Uh, so here we have some new potatoes and some beans, we also have hot dogs and stuff and loads of other tin food as well. But yeah, these are pretty much just to show you. Tin food, do you know, it's, I mean, being fed is definitely going to be important for morale, for morale to keep your energy up. So make sure you have a decent, probably about a week's worth of food. For each person in my house, I probably have about one meal a day at least. Uh, that's including my dog as well. Obviously, to eat your food in, you're going to need some ways. So, obviously, if the gas is down and normal uh, systems are down, uh, normal appliances. Here, I just have simply in here is a stove and some cooking utensils to cook on. In the garden, I do have six prone pain tanks that are full, which you can simply use a stove head on. And here is a can opener if I need to open the food as well. Uh, some of these have things that you just pop it open, but the two new potato ones, you need to open them with a tin opener. As you can see here, it just goes along like that. Uh, so, that's that. So now let's go over water before we get into medical. So here I have two big wardrobes at the moment. They aren't full because I'm only showing you them. I will fill them up again after this. I do keep these out in the garden so they're always cool. Uh, so here these are each 20 litres and a person needs about three and a half litres a day of uh, drinking water to keep them, uh, keep them energy normal. But obviously if you're not doing anything, you're just sitting around, you could probably have about half of that. Uh, if you want to know in gallons, I think these are both 8.7 gallons. And the person needs about half a gallon of water a day if to drink. They need a gallon. It says a gallon a day you should keep per person is kind of what the point of this is. But it's more than enough water. And this ain't even all my water storage as well. But two big 20 litre water containers you can see there. These are really cheap. Uh, on eBay just type in 20 litre water container and these should come up. It was two for the price of, I think I got both of these for 13. So water storage obviously important. Water is one of the big things you're going to need in any situation for cleaning and for drinking. So now I've got my first aid kit. I'm not going to open it up because I've gone over a lot, a lot of first aid kits. I've got a lot of first aid kits lately, but in there I've got stuff like bandages. I've got some uh, triangle bandages on the front here. I've got some medical wipes. I've got some medical gloves for sanitation. And then we've got a lot of other supplies inside. So that's pretty much all the supplies, guys. That really wasn't as much to go over as it was with the security and stuff like that I kind of went over all them a bit more in depth but basically any situation where you're bugging in or bugging out you're going to need supplies such as medical water and food which are the three top things that you're going to need the kind of people more prioritize i always see is food and water but medical supplies are definitely important as well so you can have some first aid kit like this i do have three other first aid kits i've got one that's kind of just a small version of this and i've got two which are kind of for an extreme trauma situation you can have something like this you could have a little just first aid kit from a shop it's up to you like i said this is a pretty in-depth one but uh, that's what I'll set for this video guys, they are the supplies and kit and equipment I have if some kind of situation happens. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, that's what I'll set, peace.